the northern part, right? Well, <clears throat> um, that is hard for us to know. We don't know whether he or the other Engl uh, Irish raiding kings um, distinguished between the Roman blood and the pre-Roman. It may have been difficult because, you know, 400 years and you kind of mix it up a little bit. So um, when you consider that it was largely a Roman, it was a Roman country, a Roman, uh, chances are she was a Roman, a, 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 Ro a, 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 a British Roman, a Roman Briton. I don't know that there, were, there certainly wouldn't have been any <coughs> British kings who would hold their land and their title from pre-Roman times, as was happening in Ireland. They were the chieftains going back for thousands of years. It had, they had never been deprived. They had never been invaded uh, to that extent like the, like the Romans. The Romans destroyed all before them and broke up the existing structures. Also at the time, didn't the word king have a little bit of looser interpretation? So, for example, current, okay, we've got 48 states in the, in the landlocked U.S. There would actually be 48 kings as the 48 governors. There was a hierarchy of kings. So, then, so there would have been a high so king. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, the almighty king of the entire area. No. You know, king, 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 king. So she was the daughter of one of the kings. Correct. And um, a king was measured by the richness and the desirability of the land that he was king of. So... A glorified chieftain with a, with a lot of extra land and, and yeah. wealth. Yeah. So, you know, if you were king of Meath, that's why Tara was the high king, because it was, it was the prized land. It was extremely wealthy land. So if you're the king of a, a very rocky hill, hill country, you know, you're not going to have. You're not going to be sitting at the head of the table when they all meet. You're going to be down at the bottom somewhere. So there was a hierarchy. Um, I'm confused about how uh, Amon Maka. I'm not sure if that's how. Oh, Amon Maka. Amon Maka. Yeah. Maka. Um, that was where uh, Neil or Nile was originally centered, correct? How did Tara or Terra become the uh, the place of the high kingship then? Well, Tara goes way back. Uh, it, it, it was, um, <clears throat> it was, well, the Boyne Valley, it's, it's, you have to look at the whole area. The Boyne Valley is, is a very blessed place when you study the geography of it. It grew close to Newgrange, too. Yeah, it is. But Newgrange is just all part of that phenomenon. If you take the Wicklow Mountains and you take what is now Dublin and the lift is. So you, you kind of cast your mind back 3,000 years, 4,000 years, and imagine what that would have been like. And if you take the East Coast, and if you stood on a clear day on top of the Dublin Mountains, looking down over Dublin, and you looked north, you can see the mountains of Morn. So you can see very clearly the, the land in between. It's a big, flat plain. And the, uh, the other, when you see the mountains of Morn, um, on the other, between, right, right out underneath the, the, the mountains of Morn is uh, the, um, the, the river going into Newry. What do you call it? The... Uh, Lagan? Lo no, not the Lagan. No, that's where they're at Belfast. Newry, yeah. Yeah, but what's the... Um, you know, the, the, the roll the boat over, what do you call it? I can't remember. It's, it's um, a little fjord. It's, a, it's very deep, and Newry is at the end of it. Well, anyway, so it's a very... It's a major obstacle. It's 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 um, it's it's a waterway that goes goes right. Carlingford Lock, Carlingford. So Carlingford goes all the way in from the coast, and the mountains of Morn are just north of it. So it's like a real natural division. So if you take the area, as I say, from the Liffey, which is just at the bottom of the Dublin Mountains, all the way up to Carlingford Rock Lock, and then. Halfway up there, you've got this beautiful meandering river called the Boyne going in quite deeply. It actually goes right into the heart where the bogs, you know, comes out of the, the, the inner, which is not very good. But, uh, and so 
so therefore, and any early settlers would have come up, the, they'd, have, they'd have reconnoitered it and they'd have got a pretty good idea what this was. And the natural place for them to uh, settle and to colonize would be in the Boyne Valley. And then when you look at the Boyne Valley itself and you see just how incredibly gorgeous it is and how, uh, how uh, fertile it is in either way. So it is not at all surprising that the Boyne Valley, the river, and, a lot, and the little banks alongside of it would be where the, the civilization grew up. Now, the, the ring forts, were the, that was how they lived. They made these ring forts and they were communal living, so a large family would live there. So the, the bigger the fort, and the, 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 uh, so there would have been a lot of satellite people, and then the big one. And again, when you look at the Hill of Tara, it's inevitable. It's the highest hill. It commands a view for all around, you know? And it's just a natural place. And then when you look out to the west and you see the, the, the valley to the west of it, which they're now boring a freeway through and everybody's going crazy and they don't, they, they, it's just like building a freeway through the Valley of Kings, you know? They're, they're just, it's, it's just upsetting people so badly over there. But anyway, um, the, uh, <clears throat> so it was a natural place. So whoever held that was very rich. So it goes way back into the mists of time. Long before, we have no idea what, we assume there was always kings of some sort, certainly strong wind chieftains and so on. So it has always been the jewel. So it's not like, it's not by accident that it's, it, it's, it's, it's the seat of the high king because whoever commanded that whole valley, that whole area, was undoubtedly the richest king. But as for kings, yeah, there was, uh, there was a whole bunch of different levels of kings. And uh, they um, basically had a pecking order where they you know, would give um, subservience to each other and, uh, and give hostages. But the idea of hostages goes way back into Irish history, and it's a very humane way, if you like, of, of um, settling disputes or uh, establishing rights over, over another person. Uh, well, if you're not going to come and raid me and try and steal me and burn my village, then give me something of great value to, to you, and usually that's a, a favored son or daughter. You're not going to go raiding their house when... She, he or she is in there. So, um, <clears throat> the, the likelihood is that there was an ongoing relationship between uh, Niall's father and the Irish king and uh, Catherine, the, the, the mother of, of Niall. Um, we don't know for sure, but, you know, there on, on, almost certainly was. And there's a lot of other traces and evidence where there was a tremendous amount of uh, interaction backwards and forwards between the two islands and between various kings. And what's the name of that, that movie that was made recently? Uh, I, I said, what was it? Pardon? No, the, you know, the, it's the, the king. It's, it's also, I think it's a musical. No, the Pirate Queen. No, no, that, no that's... that's uh, no, it's between English. I adore... Isidore. 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 Correct. Tristan and Isola. Tristan and Isola. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. I, exactly. Yeah. So you know that's a that is a very old, old, old saga, or old story, right. and uh, it, the it, it speaks of uh, a lot of interaction between the Irish and the and the uh, yeah. and but the Irish. That was a couple of centuries later, wasn't it? Under uh, Dermot. Yeah, we're not quite. It certainly would be considerably later, yes. Uh, but what I'm suggesting is that it shows that there was a very old, long-standing uh, tradition of, um, surprisingly enough, uh, the Irish seem to always have the upper hand. The Irish always seem to actually have colonies in England rather than the other way around. So I suppose turnaround is fair play. Well, I don't. I'm not sure that it is, but, 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 uh, <clears throat> there certainly was a very long period when the Irish were more feared in England than the other way around. Um, 
but, but anyway, so Niall followed in his father's footsteps, and there's an awful lot of romantic stories about him growing up because uh, Niall probably left more offspring than, than, he, than O'Neill seemed to be good at that, Monsignor. So, you know, it was time somebody made up for all of that by becoming a priest. <laughs> but the, the O'Neills certainly were very prolific. They, they were very fecund. Is that what the right word for it? Well, fecund? Be Pardon? Be careful what you say. I better. I better, yeah. I'll check your pronunciation. Fecund. Fecund. Well, I, they, were, they were very good at it anyway. When you go Google um, nine, nine hostages, a lot of it is genealogy. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted the story of the genealogy. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't want all the genealogy. 